Welcome back to our instructional videos about big band section playing. Um, for those of you tuning in in slow motion, that was a very, very slow motion version of the section one solely from uh, Thad Jones' uh, arrangement of Groove Merchant. And this is now we're coming to sort of strategies, um, rehearsal strategies, stuff to do in your saxophone sectional rehearsal, and maybe some stuff to do at home when you're practicing before you get into the first rehearsal. Um, so uh, my big question is, Yoni, why did you uh, play that at that such extreme tempo, and why do you do that? Why do you do that? Well, it's uh, first of all, it's it's pretty quick when when you play it in the real tempo, and uh, it has lots of details, and uh, and I think I think there are there are really a few reasons or uh, many reasons to to do it really slow one one is really the uh, i would even go to the science that 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 you need to have repetitions of correct actions before something gets installed in your in your brain uh, correctly if you repeat mistakes then then you'll be playing mistakes uh, i think that's that's the current view of <laughs> uh, in in brain study or pedagogics uh, combined, um, so therefore it's uh, when you want to play really fast, you you actually practice really slow, and you'll probably get get really uh, uh, really um, what's the word? Uh, you get much more skillful more quickly. Uh, the the other point is that that also this kind of provides you your microscope into all the possi possibilities of inflection when, when you when you widen the time frame so so you can really pinpoint uh, details of accentuation uh, bendings uh, intonation it, it it's just provides you a much much larger canvas to to work on. Right. Also, the fact the that yeah, the fact that each uh, section member can then hear their their note in the chord, the function, how it fits, things like that. Of course. Um, now, explain a bit of the process. So, when you slow these sections down in this, you know, in the, in the rehearsal, what what happens next? So, you talk about details, you demonstrate details, um, and then how do you get the tempo back up? to sort of where you want it to be for the performance. Is that a slow process, or please explain how you guys continue? Or if you'd like to demonstrate, please do. Okay, well, well, well I think if we have the time, we can start slow and then build up to that take by take. Uh, re uh, more well, what, what, how about this, why don't we take, because we've been talking yeah. a lot, but why don't, let's, let's, let's pretend you guys are having a section of rehearsal. Okay. So let's continue with this, this same sort of eight measure phrase you've been working on. And why don't you guys spend a few minutes working on this as if the cameras weren't running, you guys are having a sectional rehearsal, and let's see how you guys start to in increase the tempo and get it closer to the performance tempo. Yes, Let, uh, let's actually take uh, a place where we really, really might work on uh, the first bar from E. First and second bar of E. That's Correct. 16th notes, so that it's really helpful to slow it down.
because it, it, I feel like David Attenborough in a nature documentary because I'm I get to observe a species in their natural habitat that I've never. Uh, never observed before. No, no. But for me, as a brass player, it's very enlightening to watch you guys how you guys do this. Now, when you when you're doing this, uh, just detail work. Just now, there was very little verbal communication. It was all playing. Now, do you often like if I'm not here? If uh, would you talk more, or is, or is this is it basically playing and listening? What, you know. Well, in, in this particular case, uh, I mean, uh, we might just uh, say that let's take it slower and and speed it up. Uh, that's that's our that's in our toolbox, so so to so to say, uh, and also uh, I mean there's not that much to say really because this uh, these repetitions only provide a chance to practice it. So so so, uh, so like I was actually I was stumbling in some of the fingerings the first time. It was really interesting, but but when we went, went through that and and. And got the shine on it. Then in the in the eventual tempo, it actually went went really well. Okay, but but let me be a devil's advocate here mm. because of course, um, and and uh, I'm, I will provoke you right now. Mm. But isn't this work with you figuring out your fingerings? Isn't that something you're supposed to do before the rehearsal at home alone? Well, that's true. But 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 also, I think um, my feel is that that even though you have have them privately under your belt, then playing it together is somewhat an, an other process that, that also you need to process the listening. listening exactly. Part. I mean, and I th exactly. Thank you. I mean, because that is, that is the, that's, you know, the same thing. You can practice and you should show up at your rehearsals prepared. So that means you should look through the technical parts of your music ahead of time. But of course, the difference is, as soon as you hear it in the context, with harmonies, you know, this is another thing. All of a sudden, your perception changes. But of course, with the other players, so you know, so of course, the repetition in the rehearsals and especially in the sectional rehearsals is very often needed. So you know, so once again, thank you for answering that the, the way it was supposed to be, uh, as opposed to the other one is eh. no, you know, no, no. But of course, yeah. uh, no, very, very, very good because the reality in the section is a different one. Yes, thank you. Uh, I might also add that that you know. Uh, if it's not not clear actually why why uh, how how a professional might actually practice those details is that you know there was some clumsiness I felt in that that phrase so so in my own privacy I, I would really uh, uh, spot the places where I have difficulty and then my strategy has been to to really play only two note, three note, four note repetitions of the difficult spot. So, so, th and very slowly. I might demonstrate that. Yes, just please do. And this is also some. This is what you do when you're at home practicing. <laughs> Okay, yeah, and maybe talking to the other saxophone players, is this also something that's part of your practice and preparation routine b uh, before a project, but when you're at home, uh, or do you have? Does do any of you have a different uh, something you do differently? Miko, you haven't said much today. I also use that that way, and with metronome. And okay, with the metronome. Yes, and then okay. put some more tempo and maybe slower. Right. Okay. That's. I think that's also a very important point. And here's and here's a question to the section. Do you sometimes in your sectional rehearsals do you use a metronome, or do you usually then not when you get to the sectional rehearsal? Well, I would say we, we actually could and should use more <laughs> probably, but 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 um, when we are when we have this kind of spot with with the rest of the band, uh, I mean we often really like if the drummer would play us, uh, if not the uh, if not the uh, the comping he. he he or she does, but but actually at least a click. But but I I would really because uh, it's 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 a quite recent development. 
uh, I would actually really, really like us even to incorporate more use of something like Drum Genius, the app, which provides you not only a metronome, but, but with a very nice feel with, with the accompaniment. And uh, either way, metronome is very strict. Uh, if you want more musical feel, then, then apply Drum Genius. And one other thing, uh, really using the metronome is actually uh, I really like this method of uh, just putting an odd beat, one odd beat per per measure. L like let's say the the metronome clicks on only four, and that sh that actually uh, a little bit kind of reverses the situation where your playing has to make that beat four sound good, and that's I think also the essence of a groove. In, in so, so, or, or swing in some ways, make something else sound good, and and not like the drummer swings so much that that <laughs> the, that that it makes the whole thing sound good, and, and you are not swinging. I think it, those are some con some strategies that I, that I really are uh, really support using. Yeah, well, I mean, and also the responsibility of each player to think about and to, be, to you know take an active role in creating time and groove and swing you know that's another thing is uh, sometimes when younger players are starting out they're playing in a big band at the beginning of their musical lives they just sort of think well i'm a saxophone player or a trombone player i don't have to think about time because the drummer and the, they, the rhythm section thinks about time but of course this every you know every player in a big band needs to be thinking about time and needs to be creating this good feeling uh, of time, of swing, and things like that, and groove. Villa, it seemed like you wanted to say something. Yeah, I agree with these guys uh, about the rehearsing, and I would add uh, two things more. Uh, I think the use of metronome is a very good idea, and uh, use of an offbeat is a very good idea as well. Uh, on these uh, fast passages, I uh, sometimes I, I put uh, like a very odd odd beat like i i mean like practicing 16th notes i don't la have, have like i would like, like like in the pattern of three 16th notes because that really catches your time and second thing that catches you even better is that record when you rehearse Thank you. That's another great point. And I have to say that that's one of the other points that the, uh, the colleagues in the trumpet and trombone sections also mentioned, is that's also a very, very useful tool, is to record yourself when you practice by yourself, but also record your sectional rehearsals. And that would also be something to record your sectional rehearsal and then listen to it as a section. And then, uh, you know, I mean, but these are all very, very useful tools. In these days and days, it's so easy to be able to record yourself. So thank you. Very good. Yeah, the recording thing is really uh, a way to some kind of objectivity that, that that you really can't have while while playing live your your image about how it sounds is wrong and uh, it really relates to you know when anyone hears his own voice played back uh, on a recording speaking voice we are kind of terrified how it sounds but but it, for me it's been the same process like like you know the first recordings of my own playing well there wasn't much skill but also there was a really big difference between my idea about how it sounded and how it really is. And uh, it, it's kind of funny that what kind of factory would, would work without such a uh, quality control system, objective thing. So uh, I think we, that's really, I mean, we have recording is so simple these days. Just have your iPhone close by and, and you can do it. Or any or any phone. We don't want to do too much product placement here. Um, no, no, no. So no, no. anyway, but uh, no, no. But so why don't we uh, wrap up this uh, this wonderful discussion in this video with uh, a version of Groove Merchant, and I think you guys are going to play the whole uh, whole thing from the melody at letter A. And this is now sort of what happens at the end of this rehearsal process. So after they've spent time playing things very slowly and speeding it up, working in their sectional, and then we get to hear this whole thing um, in the tempo. Uh, that uh, that we would do it in a performance. So this is the Umo Helsinki uh, Saxophones Jazz Orchestra. Wait, Umo Helsinki Jazz Orchestra Saxophone Section with Groove Merchant. Mm -hmm. 